welcome everyone. LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Welcome to wherever you're watching. You've been watching Golden Nuggets. We are a Bible study with a church service format in a chat room environment. We're not a chat room. We are a Bible study and we love the Lord. And when we do chat, we chat praise reports and prayer requests and things of God. Amen. So welcome to everyone wherever you're watching. Praise God. Praise God. Now, now our lesson today about the thorn. Many people have that verse in the in the Bible, a thorn that we have to deal with. And and I'm gonna I did a lesson about this year one. I kind of touched upon it because it was it was actually answering answering someone's question. And uh I, as always, I, I wrote down several versions. John, which version did I put up? <laughs> I think it says uh, our thorn, the thorn we have. Uh, what is the official title I put? I do it every time. The Holy Spirit gives me four titles, and I forget which one I actually put on the screen that you guys see. Amen. So welcome, uh, everyone. Let me see. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, amen. We just did that, Brother Sean. We got you in prayer. You just let, We got you. Uh, we pray, just did intercessory prayer. Uh, so I'll be get, get back to you once, once you lift it up. The thorn in our flesh. Amen. The thorn in our flesh. And what happens, first before we say anything, we all, I, I guess everyone has seen a rose bush. If you haven't, a rose bush is a very beautiful plant. And the rose is so pretty, red, yellow, all beautiful colors of God's colors. But on the stem of the rose are these very sharp thorns. And if you don't know it, you say, look at that beautiful flower. And you go to pick up the flower. And you pick the flower, and all of a sudden, you get this prick from a thorn on the rose you didn't see. You look at the beauty of the rose, yet when you go to pick it, when you go to pick it, you all of a sudden feel this pain. And that pain is coming from the thorn that's on the rose bush. See, and, and we're talking about the thorn. There's, there's an old saying, he who, he who picks a rose, must accept the thorns it bears. He who picks a rose must accept the thorns it bears. So if you want that rose, the thorns come with it. Now that's just that's just the meaning of that saying. I'm gonna to lead to the scripture in a minute. I'm kind of I'm leading you, I'm leading you to the scripture, but I want to give you that example first, which means some things look some things look so beautiful in life that we want to achieve or that we want to have. But some pain comes along with that achievement along the way that when you get it, there's some things you got to go through to make it to that point. Amen. Thank you, Dana. There's some things you have to go through in order to reach that goal of the beauty of that thing that you want. So I give the example of the rose because the rose, the rose is the goal, the healing, the breakthrough, the deliverance, the miracle that we're seeking to get. But along the way, we have to go through some trials and tribulations before we get to the achieving and taking that rose that we love so much. And what I want to first read, turn to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. We're going to start at verse 1. Now I've shared, the, I've shared this verse several times and then I'll give you the actual scripture about the thorn because that's actually our lesson today the, about the thorn. But I'm, I'm leading you to it very slowly. Now what is a thorn? A thorn causes what? Pain. We go through life having different pains. Now I'm going to go, um, uh, John, I'm going to do one through, let's see, one through five, verses one through five. We're going to read together. Romans chapter five, verses one through five. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into his, this grace in which we stand and we exult in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that the tribulation brings about perseverance and the perseverance proven character and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappear because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Stop right there. Praise God. Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, as we've said a part of this verse, a lot of times, as I always say, sometimes it's important to read the entire thought. We, we get into a habit of quoting partial verses and, and it makes it work for what we're talking about 
for what we're trying to do, but sometimes to get the real meaning of a scripture, you have to read beyond just a scripture. Amen. We have to we have to read the entire thought. Sometimes we like we said the other day, so many times we say, Thou shalt keep me in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. And we stop. But that is the whole verse. The whole meaning is keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him because we trust him. So that's the whole thought. In this verse, let's look at verse three, three through five. Not only this, we also exult in our tribulations. It means we don't get sad. Hey, Jay-Z, we don't get sad in our tribulations. We, we, we keep ourselves lifted in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about what? Perseverance. And perseverance brings what? Proven character. And proven character brings hope. And hope doesn't dis does not disappoint. Hope does not disappoint because what? The love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to who was given to us. And so when we sing the song, anointing fall on me, and the Holy Spirit is in us and the anointing's on us. That's a part of God pouring that on us to give us the strength when we call out to his name for healing or for deliverance or for whatever it is we need deliverance from. When we call out his name, we're he's he's pouring the strength we need. That's why it says the last verse. He the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. He gives us something to give us the strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He gives us the strength we need to make it through the storm, the pain, the suffering, the infirmity. He never leaves us. If, if we're all followers of Christ, even in the worst pain you feel, he's right there with you and giving you strength to bear it. See, that's the most important part. He doesn't give you something you cannot bear. Like I said in the other in the other scripture, and I, I'll, I'll list all the scriptures under the video. He will not, with the way of temptation, whatever the temptation is, whatever the temptation is, he will always give you a way out of the temptation. So if you're going through any kind of physical pain, he'll always give you the strength to make it through it. He's not going to let you have pain that you can't bear. And and some of us are going through different types of, types of physical pain. Some are going through emotional pain. Yet you're still here. And the reason you're here is because he's given us the strength to bear it. You, you can't endure incredible pain by yourself. You can't survive emotional pain by yourself. But God can. But God can. Through Christ, we get the strength to hold on by faith. We get the strength to bear the pain. We get the strength to move mightily in, in God's way. Uh, hold on, hold on, JD. No, no long comments till after. So we have to make, have the strength to make sure we never let go. We never let go of 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 God's unchanging hand. I always said, hey, of uh, uh, Kenya, uh, we always never let go of God's unchanging hand. He's the same yesterday, today, forevermore. So we know if He moved yesterday, He's gonna move again. He doesn't just move one time in your life and let you go. Okay, you're on your own now. I blessed you 20 years ago. You're on your own. Sorry. No, no. He's the same yesterday, today, forevermore. If he's blessed you before, he'll bless you again. We just have to make sure we're still trusting like before. If he moved before, you're probably trusting. Are you trusting now though? See, we change. God never changes. We are the ones who changes. So some people say, well, how come, how come God, God doesn't talk to me anymore? Are you still listening? Let me say it again. Some people say, how come God's not talking to me anymore? And I say, are you still listening? Before, you were listening. You were standing still. You are praying. But now you're in panic, in chaos, in stress. You're not listening. He's still talking. But you're not hearing because the world makes too much noise. I say it all the time. The world makes too much noise. And we can't hear the Holy Spirit. He's talking to us. He's telling, telling us exactly what we need to do, when we need to do it, how to do it, what to say. The Holy Spirit, if you stand still, is telling you everything you need. Everything you need. Amen. Amen. Brother Carl, we got you, prayer, Brother Carl. And just do what I said yesterday. Keep your mind stable on Him. That's what the key is. Keep your mind stable on Him. We say it all the time. If you're having trouble sleeping, stress, depression, you're looking at the problem more in God. You see, that's 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 our that's our practice every day. 
Look at God, not the problem. The problem will always be there, but God is bigger than the problem. I said it last week. Don't tell God how big your, big your problem is. Tell your problem how big God is. Perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. There is no insomnia in God. There's no fear in God. There's no worry in God. So if we're worrying, that means we're looking too much at the problem. We look at God. The only way, the only way we can have peace of mind is to keep our mind stayed on him and say, God, God God's got this. God's got this. God's got me. God's got my family. God's got my situation. And that's all part. That's that's what part that's what verse three was talking about. We also exult in our tribulation. We're going through stuff. We said last week, all of us are going through stuff. But we keep on praising. We praise God anyhow. Praise our way through. Praise way to the victory over the thing we're challenged by right now. And the things we're, we're struggling against and all the things we're facing right now we keep on praising we keep on praying because god never leaves us we are the ones that drift god god is like a tree that hadn't moved but we are the ones who drift away are we holding on tight are we holding on tight to god's unchanging hand or are we looking at the world and worrying and as soon as you worry you start drifting away worry is looking at the world but when you keep your mind stayed on him, your, your rope is tight and you're under the secret place. You're dwelling in the secret place under the shadow. Stay under the shadow. Keep holding on to God's enchanting hand. Don't drift. Stay close. Because as soon as you drift, here comes fear, worry, stress, anxiety. All the things in this world that pull you away from God, that, that creates doubt. And all the chaos in this world. Amen. Now let's turn to... to um, Turn to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now this is the verse that our actual lesson is about. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to be reading verses 7, 7 through 10. Chapter 12, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. Now I... I, I I brought two different translations because I want to make sure we understand what the thorn is. The thorn is our flesh. Let me read the scripture first and then we'll talk about it. This is the amplified version. Because of the surpassing greatness and extraordinary nature of the revelations I've received from God, for this reason, to keep me from thinking of myself as important, a thorn in the flesh was given to me a messenger of Satan to torment and harass me to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might leave me. But he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Always available, regardless of the situation, for my power is being perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will allow, excuse me, I will all the more gladly boast in my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. So I am well pleased with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am made strong. When I am weak, then I am made strong. Now, may the Lord bless the reading of his word. That was the Amplified Version. Now, but the, all, no matter which version you, that you're reading, if you notice, the reason for the thorn is to keep us from being boastful. Sometimes, and I, I've seen this many times, I've seen this in the medical field. I actually made an example a few weeks ago in one of my lessons when a person had accomplished, had accomplished so much, uh, uh, so many awards, and he just got so big-headed I'm king of the world. I'm king of the world. And I, there was this one doctor who who had uh, successfully done all these heart operations. And they said, and they congratulated him and said, yeah, look, look what I did. He successfully performed all these difficult heart situations. Instead of giving God any glory, he said, man, look what I did. Look what I've accomplished. I'm really, I'm really proud of myself because I did this. I did that. I did this. I, 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 I. What is that? Me, myself, and I. That's the wrong trinity. You give 
doesn't matter what your talent is. Doctor, lawyer, athlete, God is the one who gives you the talent. When you start boasting on what you've done, you're now putting yourself in the center. God should be your center, not you. And that means that's what we talked about last week, ego. You're easing God out of the center of your life and you're putting yourself there by giving yourself too much credit when God is the one who blessed you with that. Now let's look at this verse closely. Because of greatness and revelations. Now in this verse, he's received many revelations. And sometimes, some, and I've seen this happen many times. Some people, the Lord gives revelations. Some people have the spirit to see, uh, have the gift to see things in the spirit. Some people have different gifts. And a lot of times when they're talking to a fellow Christian who does not have the gift of sight, in the spirit they have a different gift i've seen people get egotistical well i see things in the spirit well jesus talks to me well i see this i see that and they get they get kind of boastful that they have a connection with with jesus that you don't have you both have a connection it's just a different connection but some people get so boastful that they think they're better than you because they've got this gift and your gift is different when we all have some kind of gift the purpose of the gift is to make sure that you understand the reason. See, God gives you, each, God gives each one of us a gift. We all have a gift. Get that straight. We all have a gift. Now, what this verse is talking about right here, my ankle, my hair. This verse where it says, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn. See, God, God puts that thorn in your flesh to keep you from thinking you all that. That's the best way of saying it. God is putting a thorn, a, a little a little hitch in your get along to make sure you remember he's the one in charge. Because the flesh, the flesh will automatically always get boastful. The flesh wants to brag. The flesh wants arrogance. The flesh has an ego. No, we have to humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves. And the only way to humble ourselves, God knows, God knows we're in the flesh. And God knows, hey Carmen, God knows that we get e egotistical. If things go really well, we get e egotistical. We forget sometimes to give God the glory for the reason we accomplished something, the reason you got an award, the reason you reached the goal. God gave you the strength to make it. And sometimes people get there and forget to give him any praise, any honor to say, through the, through the grace of God, but God, I was able to get this. Now, let's continue. Now, let's define the thorn. I, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, the thorn, a messenger of Satan to tor torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Now, here is a case. It's almost like it's almost like Job. Remember, remember when when the, the Lord gave the devil permission to taunt and torment Job. He says, consider my servant Job, but you can, you can hit him with everything in the book, but you can't kill him. You can hit him with, you can hit him with sores, illness, hatred. You can hit Job with everything, but you cannot kill him. And he will never, he will never curse me. And so the devil was actually challenging the devil because he was so proud of how good a man of God Job was. And see, I don't know about you, I'd love to have God bragging about me. See, our goal in life, I, when, when we hear the phrase, well done, my good and faithful servant, that's something we all want to be here. We all want to be able to get to judgment day and when we get to the gates of heaven, have God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You went through a lot on earth. You went through this, you went through that, but you kept praising me. You went through this, you went through that, and you kept believing. You went through this, you went through that, and you never gave up. You kept your eyes and mind stayed on me. Well done, my good and faithful servant. So when when you're successfully making it through challenges and all the stuff we go through, all the ways we're challenged physically, emotionally, memories, all things passed away, all the challenges we go through every day, we every day we walk in victory over those things, we did a good job. That's well done, my good and faithful servant. You didn't give up. You held on to God's unchanging hand. You kept your eyes stayed on him. You were being obedient to the word, applying the word, which is the only way you hear. And so this torment that we're talking about in the word, he says, 
a messenger was sent to me to keep me from exalting myself. And concerning this, now in, in, in here, Paul was actually saying, look, look, I prayed three times. He, he prayed three times, Lord, remove the torment because he didn't understand. God put the torment there to keep our flesh in check. You're not being punished. He wasn't being punished in this scripture. He's saying, I'm sending this torment to keep you honest. I'm putting this little thorn in your flesh to make sure you never get egotistical and forget who's in your life and who got you the way you are. See, the thorn is not, you're not being punished. The thorn is keeping you honest in case you forget. Uh, let me just remind you who's in charge in case you forget because your life is going really well right now. You make a lot of money. You got a good job. Things are going well. And so quickly as things go well, so many people forget all about God when things go well. But when things aren't going well, they pray it every day. But when blessings come down, all of a sudden they got amnesia and forget all about God. They're being blessed and forget God is the one who blessed you. This is what this verse is talking about. He gives us a thorn. He gives us that thorn to make sure we don't ever forget exactly who's in charge and who gave you the blessing in case your ego gets a little bit too big and you want to put me, myself, and I back in the middle. No, no, no. Let me give you a thorn to remind you who, who really gave you that blessing, who gave you that supernatural healing, who gave you the provision and the blessing and protection and the breakthrough and the deliverance, all the things we pray for. That's what the thorn is, a reminder. Amen. Let's continue. Now, after he prayed three times, after he prayed three times to ask the Lord to please remove the thorn. See, he's praying. He said, Lord, I implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. See, he's praying for the thorn to leave, the, 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 the torment to leave because he doesn't understand the purpose of the thorn. So that's the purpose of this lesson. Sometimes we mistake the thorn as if we're being punished, as if we did something wrong. In this case, he didn't do anything wrong. If it opened up because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations. See, he's received all kinds of revelations. The Holy Spirit is talking to him all over the place. And so because he's getting such a great communication and connection with the Lord, the thorn is placed to get him, keep him from getting boastful. Hey, Snurks. See, I gave you the example earlier. So many Christians, when they when they get that that blessing of the gift of uh, whatever it is, they get boastful. That, that's not that you're not supposed to be boasting about that. That's a gift. Each one of us has a gift. It's not meant to be boastful. It's meant to use whatever gift we each have. You don't compare your gift with someone else and look what I got. You, your your gift not my gift is bigger than yours. Who's who said that? A gift is a gift. If each one of us has a gift from the Lord, each gift is equal. When people get boastful and, and, and act like their gift is bigger than yours, that's ego. Easing God out and putting themselves back in the middle, like I just said before. Now let's continue. Most gladly, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of God may dwell in me. See, that's humility. Now we go into humility. I would rather boast about my weaknesses, not about who I am. Look at all that I got. No, I'm humbling myself. I, I, yeah, I may have accomplished a lot, but I just praise God for all I got. See, even if you have a lot, you your humility comes in. Well, yeah, God's blessed me, but I just give thanks to the Lord for all that he's done for me. I just give thanks to the Lord for all the ways he blessed my life. Now, you could be easily saying, look at what I got. I got a house. I got a car. I make a lot of money. No, no, that's boastful. Humility. Same person, I just praise God for everything he's given me. I mean, God's been so good to me. God has blessed me, and I just love him so much. That's how the same person can apply humility. You don't boast about what you got. You give thanks for what you got. And that's what he's talking about. I would rather boast about my weaknesses because your weaknesses is humility. Not bragging about what you got. It's just giving thanks for all that God has done for you in your life and all the ways he's blessed you. Amen? Now, let's continue. I would rather boast about my weaknesses so that when you boast about your weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. When you're boastful, when you're boastful, that's against God's will. 
because it just said, do not be boastful in, in many places in the Bible where, where a, a sin is listed. When you are exalting yourself, you're not praising God. You're putting yourself as an idol. That's idol worship, self-idol. When you put yourself in the center and you move God out, you're now being boastful. You're not praising God. You're praising you. And that's what it says. I would rather uh, be content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Now, let's explain that. He just said, I am content with weaknesses, insults, distresses, persecutions, and difficulties. For Christ's sake, not our sake, we're being obedient to the word. For when I am weak, I am made strong. How are you made strong? You're made strong because God is with us every step of the way. It may look like we're weak, but the reason we're focused on, on, on exalting the the reason we're exalting our 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 weaknesses is because we know God is with us. And we're not bragging about it. We're just showing our appreciation for all that God has done. And so the thorn that we all have, the main purpose, the main purpose of this lesson is understanding that the thorn in your flesh is not punishment. The thorn is your flesh is God. God is is pleased with what you're doing. But just in just in case, just in case the flesh rises up, the flesh rises up to make you feel like you boastful. The thorn in your flesh is something that God puts in your life to humble you, to not to not let you forget He's in charge. And that thorn in your flesh said, Man, why why can't I get rid of this? Lord, get Lord, I need I need freedom from this thing. Lord, this this thing is bothering me. This little nagging thing right here. This nagging thing. Now, that's not punishment, and that's not an attack. Now, notice notice what it said. Notice what it says. We have to clarify this. We always pray against spiritual attacks. We pray that every day. But listen here. Look at verse, look at verse uh verse 7. After it says, there was given me a thorn in the flesh. Now listen to this. A messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. In this particular verse, this means there's some part of your life, something is in your life, not an attack that's out of control. See, the devil tries to attack us in his way. And we have we rebuke it every time. This particular thing that God has put in our life is met, he's allowing a particular attack to keep us humble. It's not going to be something that knocks you out. It's not going to be a blind sight. It's not going to be the things we pray for when we pray for deliverance from a, a tumultuous attacks. This is that little nitpick thing that just cannot seem to go away. And even when you feel like you got everything under control, this one little thing it keeps you in prayer. Now, that changes for each one of us. I can't tell you what it is for each one of us. But the way to kind of identify what it is, whenever you feel like your day is going really, really good, and you say, man, I had a great day. Oh, wow, my day was so perfect. I was this, I had this great day, great day. Then one little thing happens. And you say, oh, Lord, 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 help me deal with this. Here comes this situation again. Lord, give me strength to deal with this situation. Now, what did you just do? You went. You just went from, oh, man, what great, what great, what a great day I had. Praise God, I had a great day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Oh, man, here's this little thing. Here's this little thing. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Lord, help me get, give me strength, Lord. Give me strength to deal with this thing right here. Give me strength to deal with this thing. Now, it, the reason is there is to keep you in prayer. Because so many times, like I just said before, if he did not give us that thorn of flesh, if he did not give us the thorn of flesh, we would not, sometimes, we would not even keep praying. Because Hey, I got things. Things are going good now. Things are going good now. Hey, I, I, I well, I forgot to, oh, I, you know, I forgot to pray. I forgot to pray this morning, you know, because things are going really good and God has blessed me. But see, the panic attacks, yeah, all those things, panic attacks, fear, stress, insomnia, all this stuff. With that, some of that stuff is attacks because we're not keeping our mind on him. See, like panic attacks and fear and depression, those are usually because we're keeping our mind on a problem more than we're looking at God. 
And that's why it's so important. It's so hard to identify in each one of us what your thorn is. And, and, and sometimes it's revealed to you. God is blessing you left and right. God is blessing you left and right. And when you're being blessed left and right, you're not under attack. And even when you even when you rebuke every negative thought, even when we rebuke every negative thought that's not like God, rebuke it, bind it, cast it out. There's one thing that seems like, why is this so stubborn? And that means I need God for this. I need God to deliver it. See, we always need God for something. We Let me say it again. We always need God for something. Don't think because you've been blessed. Don't think because you've been blessed that you have no more problems. The problem is still there. And sometimes that's the part we forget. God has blessed you. And, oh, praise God, I got this. Hey, I don't need to pray anymore. I got my answer. I got my answer to prayer. I, I mean, I, I thank God for the prayer, but I don't need to pray anymore because things are going good. You better get back on your knees. Excuse me. Because things are going good. You don't need to pray anymore. Are you kidding me? The devil will knock you over so fast, you won't even know what hit you. So every time we're blessed, we stay in an atmosphere of humility. We stay in an atmosphere of thanksgiving to thank the Lord for all that he's done for us. So that whenever that thorn tries to come and just remind us, we stay appreciative. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, thank you, Jesus, for all the ways you moved my life. Thank you, Lord. I may I may be having rough times, Lord, but it sure could be worse. And I thank you right now, Lord. It's not worse. I thank you, Lord, for blessing me. However you're blessing me, Lord. Thank you for waking me up, waking me up this morning. Thank you for the breath of life. Just we have so much, I said before, a lesson I did last month. We have so much to be thankful for. And when you remember why you have so much to be thankful for, that helps stay in the right mindset. So that, that thorn won't be as necessary, but God still keeps it because as long as we're in the flesh, as long as we're in the flesh, we'll be battling against the struggle not to be boastful. The, the spirit of pride, the spirit of boastfulness, haughtiness, the, the pride goes before pride goes before fall because our flesh wants the pride. Our flesh wants adoration. Our flesh wants to be praised. But we don't we don't praise our, our we don't praise ourselves. That's self-idolizing. You're idolizing yourself. You might as well have a, a false idol. If you're idolizing yourself, you might as well have a, a, a golden staff in your in your house because you just made yourself the idol instead of the idol on the on the wall or the building. But we keep God in the center. When God stays in the center of our life, of our job, of our family, of our relationships, of our, everything in our life, when God stays in the center, it helps us to stay humble, to know that we cannot do it without him. We cannot live in this world alone without him. We cannot be sin free without him. We cannot resist sin without him because the flesh wants to sin. The flesh wants to, amen, God, uh, Big Mike? The flesh wants to sin, and that's that's what our battle is every day, and that's why we praise every day. That's why we worship every day, because the flesh wants the negativity and the depression and the worry and the fear. The flesh wants that. That may sound funny. As soon as you stop praying, what happens? Your spirits go down. As soon as you forget to pray, here comes fear. What happens? The, the body, the flesh wants it. The flesh desires things in this world. What's in the world? Fear, negativity, violence, perversion, blasphemy, thing, antichrist spirits, all that is in the world. And if you don't pray, all that becomes a part of you because you remove your covering. You remove your covering. As soon as you don't pray, you remove your covering like in my, my diagram. And now the world attacks you full force because you stepped out of your covering. You stepped out of your covering. We never step out of our covering. Psalm 91 protection. Psalm 91 protection. That's why I always say Psalm 91. One, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. We live there. You don't have to look for us. We live there in the secret place so we can stay under the shadow. We live there. You might as well give me, uh, what's your address? Uh, my, psalm, my address is uh, Psalm 91. One Street. <laughs> I, I want you to picture that. Where do you live? I, I live on Psalm 91 1 Street. Uh, turn right at the corner and go down Faith Lane and turn left at, at uh, Praise Boulevard. And I'm right there. Psalm 91, Psalm 91 1 Lane. 
<laughs> we we live there. We go home there. We go to work there. We praise there. We walk down the street, work out. We stay there. Our spirit stays in the secret place. No matter where we are, where we're going in the flesh, our spirit is staying, living in the secret place. So we stay under the shadow. <laughs> that's a, sh a short film, uh, Erica. <laughs> you know, that's true. You know, you, you might be right. You, you, I, you got you got something in my head. A shirt. Okay, you know what? Which part? Which part? The where we live? Uh, Psalm ninety one. Psalm ninety one. One lane. Uh, you, uh, let me know what you want. Let me. You guys. Let me know what you want to put on it, because these. That's why I make the t-shirts. I make the t-shirts as a reminder for us, and also to minister to someone else. See the the t-shirts that we make are for two purposes. One to remind us, and also to minister to someone else. Cause someone was oh, oh, Psalm ninety one Avenue, <laughs> Amen. Okay, okay. That next T-shirt. That's the next T-shirt. Psalm ninety one one lane. I'll, I'll make up whichever one. Amen. That's gonna be the next T-shirt. Amen. Cause that's we gotta live there. We got to live there every single day. Because otherwise, we forget who we are. The world comes in, attacks us. All these things we go through. We that happens every single day. And that's why I always tell people, not just every Sunday. <laughs> don't don't get don't get you guys started. Remember last last year, last year we did this, and oh, almost everybody on the fellowship had a different street. Everybody, I mean, I had to go. I got I, I forgot the name of that verse that lesson, but everybody on the fellowship had a had an address. And it was so funny because everybody had Faith Lane, Praise Boulevard, shout. Shouting, uh, shouting, uh, shout street, <laughs> Pray, praying boulevard in circle. Yeah, uh, you remember that? I forgot I, if I could find that, that that lesson. Everybody on fellowship had a different name. I, 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 I let you guys down. I promised I was gonna write it down. And I gotta find that lesson because that lesson was so so funny. But it's it's really all about that reason. The reason we do it is so that we remind ourselves, and when someone else sees your t shirt. They come to you and ask you, well, what does that mean? And that's the way you minister. They look at your T-shirt and say, what does that mean? And then you you open up, you share your testimony, and you tell them about the goodness of God. That's how we use T-shirts. We don't just we don't walk down the street with just T-shirts for fun. We wear the T-shirts so other people can see them say, praise God. Matter of fact, last week, after I have right now, I got the Jesus shirt on. Uh, this is not our shirt. This is another shirt. Cause I've been I've been wearing shirts for for years, but I was in I was in the store last week, and uh, this this guy this kind of hard looking brother was uh look at he got like a, mo a motorcycle a motorcycle gang member right, so I was going to get some cat food for my cat, and this motorcycle gang guy was getting something there in the same place, and so he looked up my shirt, and uh, as tough as this guy looked, he said, "Praise God, brother." You know, and God is so good. Now, when I look at this guy, he looked like he could chew nails. And man, I mean, you know, I'm on my cane and stuff. And he he was a rough looking brother. I mean, he looked like he could like chew nails and spit them out and put another uh, another another one in his mouth. And so he saw my T-shirt and say, "Praise God, brother. God is so good." And he walked off. I said, hey, "Because he saw the T-shirt." He said, "I see. I see your T-shirt. Yeah, man. God is so good." And he walked off. Now, that moment. That was a that was a moment of confirmation of how good God is in his life. But what brought it to mind was him seeing the t-shirt. The t-shirt brought to mind. <laughs> yeah, hard looking brother. Hard looking. I mean, I, I would have gone the other way if I thought I was gonna pass him. <laughs> but see, we don't we cannot judge a book by the cover. We cannot judge a book by the cover. That brother had the love of the Lord all over him. Once he opened his mouth, he looked like he was a tough guy. He looked like he looked like he might knock somebody out if you said hello. And then he saw the T-shirt. Hey, brother, I see your shirt. God is good all the time. Whatever you said, praise God, brother. I see you later. He walked off. He got the joy of the Lord in him after he saw the T-shirt. But before he opened his mouth, he looked like he'd knock you out if you said something to him. And see, we sometimes, many times, we judge people by how they look. And they got more love of the Lord in them than we do. Let me say that again. Sometimes we judge people too much by the way they physically look. When they may have more love for the Lord and praise than we do. 
I learned that lesson when we did the mission, uh, downtown and the homeless mission for about four years. Sister John and myself, we did the homeless mission. And and when we, we did the same songs we're doing now. And by the end of the praise and worship, I could tell who was who was following Christ and who was not. Because the people who are of the devil, they just looked at me like I was, they hated the praise. But then the other half of the group, they got up, started shouting and praising God. And when you walked in the room, it looked like everybody was hopeless. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit told me, put your praise music on. I want you to praise, just like we do on fellowship. The Lord said, I want you to praise for 45 minutes before you say the message every month. So we walk in the room, and I tell you, the heaviness in this room, you could feel the heavy spirit. I mean, it was almost like cutting, you could cut through it. We would go in this room, and about 50 people, they had the heaviness of hopelessness and all kind of dark spirits. You could feel it. In the spirit, you could feel it. So I put the praise music on, and very slowly, I could feel the lift, the weight lifting. They didn't move yet. 10 minutes later, they start doing this. 15 minutes later, they start doing this. 20 minutes later, half of them actually got up and started dancing. The ones that didn't know Christ just looked at me like I was crazy. But it let me know that when you're down in spirits, if you don't, if you don't stay connected, the heaviness of this world will drop on you like a, like a heavy sheet. The, but when you start praising God, it lifts. And that's what we have to, like I said, we got to keep on praising God anyhow. Praise your way through. Praise your way to the victory over whatever you're going through. That's our saying. Praise your way through. Praise your way to the victory over whatever you're dealing with. Because praise keeps lifting it up. The atmosphere of praise, the, the garment of praise, it lifts the atmosphere. And once you lift the atmosphere, you can feel the Holy Spirit. He's right there. He's right there. But you can't feel it if the heaviness is all over you. And the way to get rid of the heaviness is praise. Whether my praise, anybody's praise. You just put a praise tape of whoever on. When you feel like heaviness is all over you, I guarantee you put a, you put a shout tape on. You put a praise tape on. As soon as you praise and you start praise anyhow, you feel the, the joy of the Lord come in. And the praise, garment of praise, lifts your spirits. It even is infectious. It is infectious. Half the room out of 50 people, 25 people jumped up and started shouting. Some started praising. Some people started just, just going into tears. Some people went in a shout dance because it all looked like they were all ready to commit suicide when we walked in there. But when the praise music started and they started praising with us, it let you understand some people aren't, aren't just hopeless. They just need some praise. Some people aren't hopeless. They just have no light. But when we come in with the love of the Lord all over us and we see someone who doesn't have light, just say something to them. Praise God, brother. Praise God, sister. God loves you. And your light jumps on them and watch their face. I want you to try this. Next time you pass a homeless person, just, just say, God bless you, brother. Jesus loves you. And watch their face. I don't care. Even if, I mean, I don't, I have never, I have never said that phrase and not seen a change in their face. Now, of course, now go on. Now, if they don't, if they got a demon in them, they're going to have a face too. They're going to run from you. <laughs> if the Holy Spirit tells you to say something to them, it's because they got a demon. And you, and you say, praise God, brother. Jesus loves you. If the devil's there, they got to go. <laughs> Resist the devil because spirit knows spirit. Spirit knows spirit. And so our job is to keep our light shining wherever we go. And no matter what, no matter what the thorn in the flesh is, the thorn in the flesh is just to keep us honest. But our our main goal is to let God's light shine wherever we go against whoever. The more we let our light shine, the more we be obedient to his word, the more he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. If you keep being obedient, you're seeing his face. You're seeking to please the Lord. So whether you're praising, you're worshiping, you're giving, you're sharing, you're being a blessing to someone, these are all ways of pleasing God. 
uh, and showing him without faith, it is impossible to please God. And those who come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. We're diligently seeking to please him, seek his face, pray, live by his word, to, to apply the word. When you're working hard to do the best you can to live by his word, you are pleasing God. And that's why I'm going to close. If you're doing the best you can to let your light shine wherever you go and be obedient to his word every day, you are letting you're letting your light, your light shine. And that's that's the key. That's the key to our peace of mind. That's the key to our joy. That's what feeds our faith. Because when we're doing the things of God, you automatically feed your faith. Because that means you're what? Connected. When you're doing the things and being obedient to God's word, you're always pleasing him. And all, all we can ever do is the best you can do. Hey, Michael, we can only do the best we can. But God sees that. Don't ever convict yourself. Oh, I'm not doing enough. God's mad at me. No, no. That's a that's a that's a lie from the pit of hell. You never convict yourself. All you can do is the best you can do. Whatever it is, whatever it is. And God sees your heart. He knows we're in the flesh. He knows the struggles we're going through. He knows everything about us. But he also knows, are you doing the best you can? If you just plan, some people just plan. Some people, some people think this is a game. But a lot of people, a lot of people are gonna be shocked when Jesus comes back. The ones who go to church every Sunday and think that's gonna cover Monday through Saturday of sin, they're gonna have a big shock when they all of a sudden they see all these empty clothes next to them because we've been raptured up and they say wait a minute wait a minute where did everybody go uh you've been playing church you've been going to church on sunday and sinning monday through saturday and you think that's gonna keep you saved because you live in sin most of the time uh excuse me <laughs> so so that's why we keep on doing what we need to do to be obedient to god's word as i close and 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 the whole lesson about the phrase is just praise God anyhow. That's what the that's what the thorn is all about. The thorn is there to make sure we keep praising, we keep praying, keep remembering who God is in our life. The thorn in your flesh is not punishment. It's just to keep us in remembrance that God is the center of our life. He's our provider. He's our way maker. He's our everything. And that's what he wants us to remember. And that's the purpose of this lesson. And that's what the meaning of the thorn in the flesh is all about. Amen. Praise God. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this lesson today, Lord. For, for coming together in fellowship to share your word, Lord. We thank you for just keeping your hand on everyone in this fellowship, Lord. As we seek your face six days a week in fellowship, Lord. We remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. We're seeking your face every day, Lord. So we can hear one day, well done my good and faithful servant. Thank you, Lord. We ask right now, corporately, we ask for supernatural strength to stay strong over whatever we're facing right now in fellowship. We know you're with us every step of the way, Lord. We know you're with us in the lion's den. You're with us in the fiery furnace. We walk by faith, not by sight. But we know that you're with us because you said your word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you even to the end of the age. And we hold on to your promises, Lord. We hold on to your word and to your promises. And we thank you so much for being who you are in our life to give us the strength to stay strong and to keep on walking by faith, not by sight. Thank you, Jesus. Before we close, as always, before we close, I must make sure someone's, someone's usually always listening who does not know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So please no typing for the next few minutes as I talk to the person, prayer of salvation. Right now, I'm talking to someone right now. Someone's listening right now who does not know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In fact, all you've been doing the entire time, the past two hours, is all you've been doing is crying. And you feel like giving up on life, negativity, darkness, worry, fear. The world is caving in on you right now. You're not here by accident. God brought you here because God sees the pain and emotional suffering you're going through right now or physical suffering. You're not here by accident. 
you may be here as a backslider walking in guilt because for whatever reason you chose to leave God and go back into a world of sin and now the devil will knock you every which way but loose and telling you you never go back to God you could never go back to God because you failed God and that is a lie from the pit of hell no one is perfect all have fallen short so if you've been walking as a backslider in guilt and you want to come back to the Lord just say the prayer of salvation over again and there's nothing the devil could do to stop you if you're walking in depression and darkness and heaviness repeat after me pray with me repeat after me Father God forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been I believe Jesus is the Son of God I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is now right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and to convict us, to show us the people, the activities, and things you're doing right now which is bringing darkness into your life. Every day, spend time with God. Not just every Sunday, every day. Spend time with God. And the more time you spend praying, read the Bible, listen to sermons, fellowship, things of God, every day, the more peace you'll feel in your life. Feed your spirit, starve your flesh. Feed your faith, starve your doubt. And the more you do it, the more you feel his peace. Amen. Amen. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, retaliation, and backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named the unnamed, seen the unseen. And we cast you all out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our home, out of our family, back to the pit of hell from which you came in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Johnny, you can put that, that statement back up. Johnny, you can put that statement back up. Praise God. And Father God, right now, we ask as a fellowship, loose into the fellowship. Loose unspeakable joy. Loose peace beyond understanding. Loose restoration, Lord. Restore. Restore every area of our life. Restore our zest for living. Restore our peace of mind every part of our life loose reconciliation lord heal marriages and families right now who are struggling to survive lord marriages and families bring reconciliation lord bring love back trust back forgiveness back communication back loose supernatural healing physical healing emotional healing by your stripes we were healed we speak it every day, Lord. We speak it every day. I believe I've received my healing. In Jesus' name, I believe I've received my healing. Every day, we speak it, see it, believe it, breathe it. Put, <coughs> push, P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose, Lord. Supernatural overflow. Financial breakthrough. Supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessings of abundance blessings of abundance rain down lord rain down on the fellowship for whatever financial need large or small for you shall supply all our need according to your riches not our riches your riches in glory by christ jesus the lord is my shepherd i shall not want i shall not want for anything when the lord is my shepherd for we're the head and not the tail we are above and not beneath we're the lender and not the borrower the blessed going in blessed going out we're blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of our needs are met. We are plenty more to put in store. 
we are children of God and nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way, Lord. And finally, Lord, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. We thank you for our miracle. Each fellowship member has a miracle they've been praying for for so long, Lord. And we now know as a fellowship every day to spend time every day, see your miracle, see it, believe it, receive it to your heart. And once you receive it to your heart, start expecting your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We will never know the when. But because we don't know when, that means any day we wake up, any day could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle we've been praying for for so long. So Father God, all these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the fellowship say, Amen. Amen. Amen.